But I just knew, you know, I talked to mama, you know, went to the funeral. And I just was just like, wow, bro, like, yeah, it's just like Pop. Like, he come home, he wasn't even here a year. So for me, it was just like, this is amazing, bro. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. You know, and uh, it was crazy because when I, me, I was on tour with uh, with me and Ali, and uh, he called, he had just got out, he, he had been out, he, you know, he had got, he had, he had made me mad, he wrecked one of them cars, then he went and got another, he called me like, man, I'ma move to LA with you. <laughs> and I was like, man, I'm on tour, I be in LA, uh, in two days, he flew to LA. Call me, Gip. I'm here. I said I'd be there in the morning, and you know, I woke up in the morning and got the phone call. That's what I'm about to ask you. Like you, so you was in LA. What did he I, was coming to live? Cause I was, he was out coming there. to live. With, he wanted to come be he with wanted, you. He wanted to come live out there with me. Wow, how tough was that for you? Cause I know it was tough. It was crazy. It was crazy because. You know, me and Bond, it, it was like I was the in between between them. It, you know, I could talk to both of them, and they both would listen. But during that time, you know, he was a uh, he was on that Jeezy thing. He was. Man, I remember I the radio you. call. Man, I'm, 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 I'm gonna catch up with Jeezy. I'm like, man, leave Jeezy alone. <laughs> man, Jeezy ain't doing any. Yeah, yeah, I'm a fine two shot. We going Jeezy concert. So that's what he was doing all that night. Going, he was gonna go catch shot, and then he was gonna go to the Jeezy concert. And uh, yeah, man, they called me in the morning. I'm just like, what, bro? Like Bond called me, like, man, bro. And I was like, man, I'm on the way back to L.A. And when I got back, I was just like, man, who's he with? You know what I mean? But I just knew, you know, I talked to mama, you know, went to the funeral. And I just was just like, wow, bro, like, yeah, it's just like pop. Like, he come home, he wasn't even here a year. So for me, it was just like, this is amazing, bro. Two greats gone. Yeah, like it was just amazing to me because it was just like the same situation. Like Pac wasn't home, but eight, nine months. So the same almost. Damn near the same. Damn near the same. And that's why I was just like, uh, during that time it just seemed like uh, music and everything about music. I went through so much with him, you know, shit with Master P and... Yeah, I heard shit. about that. Shit, I, that he got, they, they, they were cool at the end, right? They got, they got cool at the end. But the night that that shit happened, I got that call. You know what I mean? And then he got here and he got talking crazy to the young blood. Man, yeah. Man, Sean Powell sound like me, man. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? I said, man. He talk, pimp. <laughs> <laughs> that man ain't trying to sound like that. How he talk? He from Decatur. He was like, man, he sound like man. I'm gonna pull up on him, man. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like it was just a task of keeping him like we gotta grow up. You know what yeah. I mean? We gotta grow up, bro. We can't we can't do because when it was an outcast, when it was Goody Mob, UGK, and and. Eight ball the MJ MJG concerts back in the day. Them were some of the wildest concerts yeah, yeah. of all time, man. I mean, if it wasn't the fight doing the concert, <laughs> the parking lot about to be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, and most of the time, pimp out there with the, all the business, man. He with all the business, and, and that's why I say that we had to learn how to. We didn't have no manuals on this fame shit. Yeah, you know this famous shit, this shit that come with it, where you know people trying you for no reason, people pulling your card, you know, brawl stealing jewelry, you yeah, know, yeah, you know, yeah, all the stuff that come along with the life. You just, you, you, you just, you don't have no manual to it. And then what was so crazy just about them and what made them so special, man? Like the first time they pulled up to the dungeon, bro, like them boys was in dickies. With 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 Miss West at the wheel, man. With, That's with, hard. So we got to meet his mama right off. Like when they pulled up to the dungeon, it was Miss West, Bun, and Pimp. 
Then the Cadillac. That's <laughs> right. And people, and people go back and be like, go back to our first video cell therapy. That's why you see Bun. My name on your select for the yeah, mm -hmm. that was like the first week they came to the dungeon, came to Atlanta. Like, bro, we want to know what's going on here. They can help us do our thing where we from, mm -hmm. and they was instantly family. Wow! So you earlier you were gonna. Um, I know you didn't finish that story. You were about to tell a story of pimp with Boosie and Webby. Yeah, that was the first. That's the first time I met Boosie and Webby was Pimp C, and Pimp mm -hmm. C was supposed to be having a two trio label. Mm. It was supposed to be a new label. He was like, yo, bro, them boys. And he was the first one that I could say, hey, man, he knew what was going on in Baton Rouge. And he knew that it was talent in Baton Rouge. And the first two people he got out of Baton Rouge was Boots and Webby. Mm -hmm. So for him, he was also, he also had an A&R ear mm -hmm. that people never gave him credit for. He knew what talent was. Mm -hmm. And I can't say that a lot of people right now in the industry really knows what talent, because I think we're in an era now, it's, it's more fans doing music than actual artists. <laughs> Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gon' talk.